I got to tell you, the morale for the Miami Dolphins organization has got to be on an all-time low. First things first, I'd like to have welcome in everybody to check out the recap video. Um, <laughs> man, Miami Dolphins versus the Jacksonville Jaguars in London. This game for each, both teams was going to be, I'm pretty sure, it, it was going to be very, very impactful, regardless of how you looked at it, win or loss, win or loss, if that makes any sense, that didn't come out right. So, mm, 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 mm. I, 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 I want to, I want to go ahead and just go back. I want to go back to six minutes and 48 seconds left in the fourth quarter. When Brian Flores decided to challenge the third down catch, right? Uh, the Miles Gaskin third down catch in the flat. Uh, this is one of the main examples that I'll be talking about when in with Brian Flores and clock management. This is a situation where you're going to have to go ahead and just take this loss. Like you, it's an incomplete pass. They already ruled it as an incomplete pass. Whoever's working upstairs and is encouraging him to challenge these plays needs to be fired. Well, it needs, it needs, a, needs a position change. Don't wish that on anybody to be fired. But that right there, like it's third down. You get an incomplete, it's an incomplete, rooted as an incomplete. It's fourth down, punt the football, we live to die another day. We're getting, if this game is close at this particular point. It's, it's what, 2020 right now? It's 2020 right now. And we need to conserve our timeouts because just in case we may come down to a situation where we need to burn those timeouts, where, where the Jacksonville Jaguars may be threatening to score. Terrible clock management. Next up, you go ahead and you want to challenge again. Six minutes and 39 seconds left in the fourth quarter. So basically back-to-back plays. Brian Flores decides to challenge again after the punt appeared to go, appeared to touch the returner Jamal Agnew's index finger. And you end up losing that challenge. If those of you that are are new to the sport of football, you are oh, you have three timeouts per half. Brian Flores just burned two timeouts in less than fifteen seconds. Mind you, the game is close. It's twenty twenty, and you don't and you have one timeout left. And you're punting the football back to the Jacksonville Jaguars. Just wanted to get that out there before we actually jumped into this, man. Wanted to get that. Just wanted to get that out there. But let's go ahead and just go over the drives, the scoring drives, real quick. Tua to Jalen Waddle, a slant route makes it made it seven zero in the first quarter. First drive for the Miami Dolphins is looking extremely promising. Jacksonville Jaguars. Matthew Wright kicks a forty yard field goal, makes it seven three. Jason Sanders kicks a thirty three yard field goal, makes it ten three. Jason Sanders comes back and kicks another 24-yard field goal, making it 13-3. And at this point, and at this point, the Miami Dolphins had them on the ropes. Remember what we talked about during, during the preview video as far as the game plan was for the Jacksonville Jaguars? They're going to try to run the football as much as possible, get James Robinson the ball as much as possible, and have Trevor Lawrence feed off of what James Robinson is producing. At this point, the Dolphins, they have a they have a two-possession lead. They're going to have to come, they're going to have to come out in halftime and throw themselves back into the game. But right before halftime, the Jacksonville Jaguars, they put together a drive where Trevor Lawrence hits. Marvin Jones for a 28-yard touchdown and makes the game 13, makes the game 13-10. Dolphins, of course. And then we go out, we come out in the second half, and the Jacksonville Jaguars go ahead and continue to capitalize on their success. And they go ahead and James Robinson rushes in for a one-yard touchdown pass having the Jacksonville Jaguars take the lead, which is a 17-13 score at this point. Then the Dolphins answer back. 
uh, to it to Waddle again. It was a two yard, it was a two yard touchdown pass to Waddle, uh, makes it twenty to seventeen. And then you have the two back to back field goals. Matthew Wright, the the ridiculous one that literally looked like it was going to go straight to the right, and then it ended up blowing back to the left and somehow making it in there. And of course, the excellent excellent third down call that they had before they kicked the game winning field goal the Dolphins were backed all the way up because they thought they was gonna go for the Hail Mary the Jacksonville Jaguars came out and ran a quick slant play I believe it was a a four second play if I'm not mistaken and ended up making it a manageable making it a manageable 53 yard field goal for the Jacksonville Jaguars to win the game Obviously, a lot of things were stacked up against the Miami Dolphins this game. I know due to injuries, Xavier Howard out with the groin injury, Byron Jones out with the groin injury, well, excuse me, with the Achilles injury. It changed up the Miami Dolphins defensively as far as scheme wise. Not a lot of not a lot of blitz, a lot of blitz, a seven man fronts so of us blitzing all the time. We got to come out and play a lot of zone. Receivers, Preston Williams out. Devontae Parker out, Will Fuller on the injury reserve. Like we had a lot of injuries. But at the same time, you're going to have to, to adapt because I know that's exactly what the two and ears are going to say. We didn't have our starting receivers. We didn't see, no, this is not how this is not how this works. This is not how it's worked. You go, you going out to face one of the worst teams in the league. You couldn't even edge out a win against the worst, one of the worst teams in the league in the Jacksonville Jaguars with their issues that they have. In that organization, you can't go out and win that game. It's ridiculous, man. It's ridiculous. And while I'm just I'm just sitting here thinking about it, the Dolphins need a running back, man. Stop playing around. Just go ahead and get my get my, get my get the Dolphins a running back. And I'm not contradicting what I just said as far as like you, the two and ears are going to try to blame the injuries at the receiver position. At the same time, there should have been no reason at all. Tua should have been throwing the ball 47 times after he makes his first start since week two. There should be no reason why he should be throwing this ball 47 times. The load should be carried by the running game considering the fact that we we want to protect Tua as much as possible. He is not 100%. He is wearing whatever that is, a flak jacket that's where, where, made of carbon fiber or, or whatever material that is called. He's out here throwing the ball 47 times. He was 33 for 47, 329 yards and two touchdowns. That's not how you're going to win football games. Our leading rusher was Malcolm Brown with five attempts for 24 yards, 4.8 yards a carry. You're not going to win the game throwing the football, especially with Tua right now. I'm, I'm sorry. I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to give you the excellent, excellent compliment sandwich here. Just, just the underneath the underneath throws the tool was making. You're not going to win the game that way. Well, taking t- taking taking 47 attempts. The Dolphins need a running back. The Dolphins need a running back, a serious running back. And a lot of a lot of people are going to be like, "Oh my God, Noah Embignogany is a bust." I know we we kind of like shifting back and forth from offense to defense this time, but everything is just everywhere right now. Everything is everywhere right now. The old Noah and Benogany now. Uh, it's funny because me and Quinte was just talking about it last night on the Not For Debate podcast. Be sure to check out the Not For Debate podcast. The link is going to be in the description. Noah and Benogany, his lack of experience, he's going to have to, he's just going to have to take those lumps. And the Dolphins, I feel like, have not put him in the right situations for him to earn, earn that experience. We got two, we have two, very good cornerbacks in Xavier Howard and Byron Jones. We just have Noah Embignani just sitting on the bench. Our 25th overall pick in the 20, 2020 NFL draft is sitting on the bench. And now when his number is called, you expect him to be great. Organization in turmoil, man. Or organization is just, just in turmoil. Uh, Marvin Jones had a field day on him today. Seven catches, 100 yards, and a touchdown. And the key t- the t- touchdown was key towards the end of the first half which ended up making the score 13-10. Just ridiculous, man. Just freaking ridiculous. Like something like we got to we got to make some adjustments here. Uh, the season ain't over yet. 
but it's, but I feel like I just talked our ears off for real. So I'm just gonna go ahead and just wrap this up. We just gonna come back tomorrow with with a, with a brand new mindset, and, and we we go we go continue this discussion tomorrow. But let me know what you guys think. You know what it is. If you enjoy the content, please don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. This is Great One Devore. I'm up out of here.